first of all, I would like to thank you all for everything before we start this review. Second, I would like to announce that we will be streaming Fallout Equestria tonight at 9 p.m. And your support is more than welcome. Tomorrow we will likely be streaming Three Kingdoms. Second, um, or third at this point, I'm working on the reprinting because I've sold all the original copies. If you still want a copy, you can still order one. But just know, it's going to take about two or three weeks. Now, on to the video. Rage 2. What is it? When does it exist? What did Id really make here? Now, Rage 1, it's my understanding, had lackluster sales. But they still made a second game. Rage 2, to me, is what happens when you take Doom and Fallout and put them in a room and tell them to make a baby. It is legitimately good for a time. Now, yes, it's still a big AAA game. Yes, it's still an open world. Yes, it still has a lot of features that go with those, such as repetitive objectives, repetitive gameplay loop. But there's one distinctive difference here that I must cite. And that is the gameplay itself. Rage 2's gameplay is surprisingly satisfying. Jumping in and running around and murdering things with shotgun and force powers is done amazingly well. Yes, some areas do get reused. And yes, a bunch of assets get reused. And yes, the enemies, there's quite a few of them that are the same. However, a lot of the pieces that don't get reused but are the same objectives are completely uniquely designed. Each gas station I've come across has not been the same as the previous gas station for the raiders. Each raider type of base has not been the same. The different type of raiders have distinctive different ways in which you need to combat them. River hogs do a lot of damage. You need to focus on avoiding damage more. Uh, the immortal guys have a fuckload of armor that you have to rip off. It means you're going to use more ammo. The point here is this. The game play itself, the gameplay mechanics, the constant upgrading and additions, and the way in which you feel powerful and potent in a world that doesn't care that you exist is very, very well done. However, what else can I say? I mean, like, as far as gameplay goes, like, firing all the weapons, having different modes, Firing them definitely feels unique and different. There are times where I resort to my pistol just because it feels like I'm hammering off a 45 into someone's face. Um, the assault rifle is very good for just laying down fire. The shotgun is your go-to. With both a armor-stripping buckshot mode and a literal aim-down-the-sights railgun the rocket launcher having two different modes I'm assuming that every weapon is like this they all have upgrades you can put on them each they even have dividing upgrades where you have to pick one or the other I'll tell you right now speed reload is definitely better on the shotgun than, than an extended mag because only having to shove one shotgun shell in and you get a full clip yeah that's what I'm talking about 
point here is this. They do an excellent job at just making you feel powerful and potent, making all the weapons feel unique, and each one having a situation for which it is supposed to be used. The overdrive mode being one of your first abilities, if not your very first ability, um, is literally just a mobile quad damage mode for doing well at the game. You get a quad damage mode that regenerates you. And it feels like you're making a difference as you run around and just slaughter things that need to be killed. Uh, the vehicular combat is relatively fun. I mean, you have different challenges with it. I just don't particularly enjoy vehicular combat to begin with since uh, Twisted Metal is no longer around. Now, on to the story. The story is cliche and lackluster, but it knows it is. It's like the story of XCOM 1 or XCOM 2. They know they're in a B movie. They know they're not very good. So how do they make up for it? One is fourth wall breaks. They've got as much fourth wall breaking from the main character as I've ever seen. They do a lot to, to just kind of make you laugh at the story itself because they're just going to admit... We're, we can't really write a good story here. Like, this just needs to be cliche and and revel in it. And even they, the developers and the main character, proceed to belittle their story and their story system. There is a mission. I'm going to give you a little spoilers here because this is a review. There is a mission called Double Cross. You're expecting the entire time for one of your allies to stab you in the back. What happens instead is the lead bad guy appears on screen with two different clones of himself. They played you through an entire mission in which you were constantly paranoid and suspicious, nearly captured by the enemy in two separate instances, and then they turn around and do all of that for a pun entire mission all of that paranoia all of that feeling like you're going to be captured all of that feeling like this is a setup for someone to stab you in back in, in the back and they deliver a pun that is how irreverent they are to their own story and admitting that their own story is not very good So you just keep regenerating a torso in the head. I shall meet again. That's it. Yes, but I'll tell you what we do have there. That is a hell of a painful way to die. Don't you just have like a, an instant kill switch that's painless? Wouldn't that make more sense? Here, let me just get your DNA, which is... I was gonna say. I'm just gonna take the whole head. Like, I'll mount it on a pipe when we're done. I think I've got a big enough DNA sample for you. Let me bring it in. It's called Double Cross. Where's the Double Cross? Because the guy's name is Cross. His name is Oh, there was two oh of them. God. All that for a pun? Yes. All <laughs> that for a fucking pun? <laughs> a fake out and a pun? All that <laughs> for a fake out and a pun? Oh! Oh, you hurt me! Jesus. 
Dang it. I like that. Now, my experience so far has been fun. I still will load up this game and run around and do a couple of objectives just because I can. I ran a birthday stream for nearly 16 hours just playing this because I could. Because it was kind of fun. I'm, I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, yeah, the game does have problems. There are frame rate issues. There are clearly some need for some more polish and some refinement. Um, but at the same time, the enemies can kill you. You will go down no matter how powerful you are if you are not being careful. It's like playing Doom on Nightmare Mode constantly. There are legitimately several instances in which I was surprised by this. And on top of that, I enjoyed the game. Despite the frame rate bugs, despite any other issues that were occurring, and despite I know that some people are going to say, well, it has the DRM. Yeah, the DRM's pretty fucking stupid, but that's a, you should take that off immediately. Um, there is just some frame rate lag in general, despite NVIDIA issuing two updates just for this game. Um, I, however, still found my enjoyment. And can still say that this is what Fallout 4 and what Fallout 76 should have been as far as a gameplay loop is concerned. If they wanted to go lackluster on the story like they did, this is what you should have delivered for a gameplay loop, and you didn't! Take note. This is my opinion. And I understand that my opinion is not always good as gold. As far as what I would pay for this game, well, I don't think you should pay the full $60 price, obviously. Um, the lackluster story, the the constant um, frame rate lagginess I'm currently experiencing, and the couple of other random little tidbitty bugs that have occurred, I honestly think you should uh, you should wait for it to go on sale, but not a big sale. Like twenty percent, ten twenty percent is gonna be enough. This is a game that I feel like, yes, you can have fun, but it doesn't warrant the full $60 price tag because even the game itself admits its story is not very good. Its story is a very standard hero's journey that basically says, screw it, we're going to be Deadpool of the Wasteland. Some people will appreciate that, some people will hate it. Uh, and I know a lot of other reviewers are going to harp on the story, the frame rate issues, and the DRM. Those are all fair and valid points. However, the gameplay itself is incredibly super solid. If you enjoyed Doom 2016, you will enjoy this immensely. And I just hope that Bethesda takes the, the stupid uh, Devuno DRM off. And that they actually let id work on the game like id wants to work on the game. Because it's also fairly obvious based on how the game has turned out. That this isn't just... This isn't just a triple A release. This is somebody's baby. Because id was willing to take a second chance on a game that didn't do super well. And I feel like id would be willing to take another chance on Rage on top of that. So that's one of the reasons why I'm giving this a thumbs up. Why I'm saying, in spite of the bugs and the problems and everything wrong with this game, it's still good. It's good enough, I should say. And quite clearly, the developers at id Software care. Because this is what 76 should have been in terms of speed, fun, and just having a good damn time. The number of bugs are few and far between. The frame rate lag is mostly fixed thanks to NVIDIA's uh, software updates to graphics cards. 
But honestly, I can see why this is somebody's pet project. And I can honestly say that the story has made me laugh on several occasions. So, there it is. My review of Rage 2. We had so much fun with this on live stream. I look forward to streaming it again once we get some Three Kingdoms under our belt. And I look forward to hearing what you have to say in the comments as well as in the chat during the premiere today. Now, into the video time. First off, I'd like to thank this very long list of Patreon people. Uh, I'd also like to thank Fop Doodle for, for go, becoming a $50 patron again. Um, thank you. Uh, I'd also like to thank everyone who watched and who has supported this channel for so very long. We have officially sold the entirety of the first printing. We've actually oversold it. We've oversold it. I have to get more books printed ASAP. Um, to do that, I'm going to be upping my streams and increasing how long I'm streaming for. Uh, but I'll be streaming tonight, 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Fallout Equestria. You guys love this. You guys need to keep coming back for more. We're so very close to Roll20 giving us a full sponsorship for this one. And I would love to just have you guys there to watch it. And remember, this is the book. This is the book itself that some of you have heard of, that many of you have purchased, that we are using to write it. Furthermore, um, thank you all for your continued support. Now I'm going to go get ready to stream and I've got to go to the DMV today. So hopefully you all enjoyed this episode and I will see you all tonight or tomorrow. In the meantime, this has been Fiora, and good night, everyone.